Hello everyone and welcome back to the how to find cheap flights tutorial series. Today is going to be a bit of a different video. This is video 8 that I'm doing and today I want to spice things up a bit because we've been stuck on Skyscanner all the time now and today for the first time I want to break the ice and do something else. We will come back to Skyscanner as soon as in the next video already um, but for now I just want to do something else um, and this is a very specific reason which I'm going to explain in a bit. I will show you how to book a flight with Ryanair. Straightforward, isn't it? Before we get started, about me, my name is Luca, I'm the German travel guy and I've traveled to over 80 countries at age 19 and I'm currently on my mission to visit every country on the planet. And I speak six languages, or at least I try to. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please subscribe if you're learning something from these videos and follow the YouTube playlist to not miss any further videos. You can see my travel map there and a picture from Kabul, Afghanistan. So what we will learn in this episode is, as I've already said, how to book a flight with Ryanair. And in addition to this, we will look at how many extras do we need, as in hand luggage, meals, whatever you can think of, and what are the fees and when is the best time to book these things. Okay, so now I am on Ryanair.com and we will see a flight that I found through Skyscanner. So we can see it's in pounds at the moment, nine pounds 99. So it's a bit more expensive than 9.99 in dollars or euros, but it's gonna be like like 11 euros, something like this, maybe like 12 dollars, something like this, around this. Um, and the reason why I today want to walk you through a booking um, with Ryanair is because very simple, in five days from now, I will take this flight from London Stansted to Eindhoven. As I said in the last episode, I live in Mönchengladbach, um, a city in Germany that is quite close to the Dutch border. And for me, it makes a lot more sense to fly to Eindhoven than to Germany because it's a lot cheaper. There you can see this travel hacking in action. So I'll actually take this flight on Sunday um, for £9.99 from London Stansted to Eindhoven. And um, yeah, this is why I, I wanted to put this video in right now, not just to spice things up, but because I actually have to book it. So I was thinking, why not just include it in the course and why not just walk you through this? If I have to book it anyway, I might as well show you. So we have here selected, as I said, I found this flight on skyscanner.com and we have selected London Stansted to Eindhoven one way, 18th of April, um, one passenger. So then Ryanair gives you this little timeline. So if you want to look for another date, you could as well choose another date. Um, but I want to fly on Sunday, the 18th of April. So I'm just going to click on this flight. You have to click on this flight. And then what you have to do is you will have to select a package. And this is where most people get weak already. So we are not going to select regular, definitely not plus and definitely not flexi plus. We are going to continue with value. Just imagine we found a flight for, let's say a tenner, just 10 euros, 10 dollars, 10, 10 pounds, whatever. Now imagine just because of the package that you want to book, paying 74 pounds extra, like that doesn't even make sense. And why I'm going to explain um, in this video, because most of these things, first of all, we don't need these things. Like, what does this even mean? Reserved seat, as if you're gonna stand in a plane. Like, I'm sorry, but this has absolutely no meaning to us. If we need a bag, if we need an extra bag, we're gonna add it later in the booking and not right here. Because right here, they are trying to justify these prices by giving you things that we will never need in our lifetime. Another thing, a free check-in at the airport. Now, I don't know who needs this. Like, we're not going to check in in the airport. I'm going to walk you through how to check in with a Ryanair flight as well. Because we're go just going to use our phone. It takes a minute to check in. And then you have the barcode on your phone. You don't need to print anything off. Like, why would you even go through the hassle of standing in a queue in an airport? Like, to me, this doesn't make sense. And um, all this stuff, basically, we, we don't need this. Fast track through security. This has no meaning, especially if we're in airports like London Stansted. There's nobody going to be there at the security anyway. And there will always be people who also buy the fast track access pass. And then probably you're going to wait about the same time. But even if you have to wait five or ten minutes more, this does not justify the price of 75 pounds. So we will 100% and always, please do this, we will click value. 
we will click on continue with value fair and now you either need to um oh you can log in later as well but just make a rhino account it doesn't hurt it doesn't harm anybody they're not gonna send you um offers if you don't want to so it's completely safe i've been using it for for like three years now i'll just log in with my um I'll just log in with my email address quickly. I'm going to censor it. Right now I am logged in and I already have a bunch of passengers saved here. So Sophia, my girlfriend, Jan, my best friend, Saskia is my mother, <laughs> Daniel, a friend of mine. Um, so what I'm going to put in is um, I'm, I'm going to fly. Yeah. So you have to put in the person who flies. I could book for my mother right now, but then the problem would be I cannot. It's impossible to change the name afterwards. Yeah. So make sure that this name is correct. I'm going to be Mr. Luca Joel. That's my second name. Nobody knows this. Luca Joel Ferdmenges. This is my name. Good. I, I could have also just clicked here and it's already saved in. Good. So make sure this name is correct. Triple check it because you will not be able to change it afterwards. In the beginning of the relationship with my girlfriend, it actually happened that I booked a flight for her. To come to China with me. So basically I put in her name and she has two last names. Her name is Robinson and Seidel and I put in Sophia Lily Robinson. Turns out Robinson does not appear on her passport. I called them up. I called them up because it was a flight that was really expensive. It was really spontaneous and it was um, to China with Emirates and even Emirates did not manage to change the name. So in the end, what I had to do is I had to cancel the entire flight. I got a tiny bit of money back, but really nothing compared to what I lost. Um, and then I had to rebook another flight, the same flight and put in her exact surname. And although it was the exact same person and we could prove that she has two names on her birth certificate, but they didn't appear in her passport. So make sure guys that this is readable exactly like this in your passport. I could as well put in Luca Ferdmenges in Europe. Nobody would care. They would let me through 100% internationally. Make sure that you put in all the first names that you have so they can check. Okay, Luca Joel and they're going to check in the password Luca Joel. Okay, it matches 100%. Yeah, this is why I put in Joel always just to match the passport 100%. Occasionally, by the way, it's going to say just put in your first name. So if you uh, if your name is Luca Joel, just put in Luca, then of course, follow this. But normally put in all the first names that you have. You want to click continue. And what we will get right now, it's still loading. We will ha go to the seat selection and seat selection earlier was um, highlighted in the in the extra special package. We don't need this, honestly, why? You're, you're like the comfort is not gonna be greater in there or there or there, simply because you sit in the front. You won't see more because of this. Like there's absolutely nothing special about this. Of course, we all hope to get a window seat, but is this really worth 13 or nine pounds? Even nine pounds, that's a tenner. That's almost the exact same price that we are flying for. And I'm, I don't just want to double the flight price just to sit on the window for one hour. Like, I'm sorry, but that doesn't make sense. Especially because most of the time we want to board last and there will still be lots of window seats empty where you can just sit down. Um, so this already as a quick spoiler, we're, we will always try to board the plane as like um, in the last 10% of the people because then we have a whole overview over the plane, what is full, what is not full. And then we can sit down at our place but we already know as soon as we have taken off and the seatbelt signs are switched off, we can just go to another place where it's maybe a bit a bit freer or maybe we have a, even a, a whole row for us and nobody's going to care about this. So we click option two, random seat allocation. I want a random seat allocation. Yes, this is what I want. I like trying my luck in life. <laughs> this is now about baggage. So basically, you are only allowed one small bag only with Ryanair. However, this is really, really interpretable. Over the next videos, I'm going to show you some bags and some tricks, how you can bring as much luggage basically as you want into a cabin. So the brand that I use, for example, for my backpack is called Cabin Max. Um, you can honestly just go to Amazon and type in um, cabin bag or flight cabin bag, and you're going to find so many products and they're all essentially the same. Um, they're basically bags that allow you to have the maximum size in a cabin. 
Now, Ryanair changed their, their things and now officially they wouldn't allow this bag, but I've never paid for this bag. So don't be afraid if you just travel with hand luggage. These centimeters here, they um, they don't mean anything if you have the right optics. It's all about optics and this goes way too far right now. But there's one thing that is very important right now. If you already know that you have to bring a suitcase, you already know this, there are two things that you will choose from. And um, it is always cheaper to book the suitcase in the booking process instead of booking it afterwards. So if you already know, I'm gonna use a suitcase, please book it right here somewhere. So I'm gonna select one small bag only because I will not have a suitcase. You get a little warning sign because obviously they want to charge you more money and they want you to book the, the more expensive um, stuff. But it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Um, we will play a lot with the optics even if we bring a bit more. Priority and two cabin bags is actually something that I um, use quite often. Not because of the priority feature, which is basically that you bought the plane early. Um, oh no, I got this notification. So priority is basically um, that you bought the flight um, earlier than anybody else. But I've been on Ryanair flights where there were more priority passengers than um, regular passengers. So this doesn't quite add up and you will wait about the same whether you're priority or not. So don't worry about priority. What's important for us is two cabin bags. This could make sense because basically what you will need to look at is whether your, um, your suitcase is small enough to be a hand luggage suitcase. So if you see, these are the measurements for the suitcase and you should keep them because I've been on flights where people were rejected, like they're really strict with trolleys and suitcases, really strict in hand luggage. So please keep these measurements and try to keep it below 10 kilograms. Um, the weight doesn't really matter too much, but the dim dimensions they're quite strict about, not with the backpacks, but with the suitcases. Um, so make sure you're below these measurements. You can just quickly measure your suitcase. If you realize, okay, this is not enough for me or you don't want to bring it into the cabin for whatever reason, um, then just select a checked in bag. They're going to be a little bit more expensive, but you can get a 20 kilogram checked in bag for um, 20 pounds 99. Keep in mind, our flight is just nine pounds 99. So this would be double the flight price on top of the original flight price. So we try to avoid this as much as possible. Normally I try to get it into the cabin and I just choose a smaller suitcase or whatever. If you have to though, book the suitcase right here because it's gonna be cheaper than booking it later onwards. Now equipment, buggies or so, you can also book here. I'm not gonna do this. I will just click continue and we'll be directed to the next page. Um, so we're getting through now quite quickly. So right now, again, they're offering other stuff like parking, in-flight food and drink, um, travel insurance and stuff, fast track. As we said, like fast track is like, it's like the biggest scam. Like every airline does it. It's nothing against Ryanair. I love Ryanair, okay? I love them for their prices and, and everything. And they're really cool. Like the, the stewardesses are really chilled always. Um, they're really cool people. But like fast check, we don't need travel insurance. We don't need, probably you even have an insurance that covers some travels. Like up until recently, I didn't have a travel insurance. I traveled to like 50 countries without having a travel insurance. Then I got a travel insurance, but not because I wanted to book one, but because I switched to the N26 bank, um, like the pro account for my bank, which basically includes a travel insurance. So this was just a little bonus. You don't need parking un unless you really have to, but we're gonna try to go there with public transport because it will be cheaper. In-flight food and drink. Guys, honestly, get some food from home, prepare a little lunchbox and take it with you onto the plane. You don't have to buy the super expensive snack simply because you're on a plane. Just leave it. You can take any lunchbox, make some bread, make some whatever and take it with you onto the plane. You can make yourself some pasta, put it in a lunchbox and you'll have your, your in-flight meal for a lot less than what you're gonna pay for because here the 180 does not mean you get a meal or all of this for 180. The 180 is probably for the KitKat alone, yeah? So keep this in mind, guys. Um, don't be fooled here. It's gonna be quite pricey, food on planes. Recently was actually the first time ever that I tried something because I wanted to try the, the vegan lasagna by Ryanair on the flight and it was five pounds. And I was really hungry, so I wanted to try it. I'm vegan, so it was like, wow, they now have vegan lasagna. So I wanted to try it. It wasn't the best lasagna of my life, but it was all right. And um, I don't think five pounds is so bad. 
I was I was just really happy to see some some vegan options in the in the actual like hot menu kind of thing. So I I felt like trying it. So now we are here in our basket. You know this from Amazon. Uh, you don't need to do anything here anymore. You can just click view basket and then you'll click checkout. Uh, so now you can verify all your flight information before actually paying for the flight. Um, so here charity donation and all this stuff you can click if you want. Um, I'm not going to click it at the moment because there's so many things that you can choose from. You can see it's set like carbon offset and everything. I think realistically it's better helped if you donate money to, to other charities or so that you that you trust and not just randomly. Okay, simply because I book a flight now, I'm going to um, pay some more money. But still, guys, these charities are legit. And if you feel like donating money, then totally do it. Um, most of the times in the past, I've actually clicked this. It's quite interesting because normally it was just at like 80 cents or like one euro. Um, and now it's jumped up to two pounds. I don't know what happened there. Ah, uh, here you have to click again. I don't want to be in short. And here you can pay. You can pay either with your credit card or with PayPal. Um, I'm, I think, I think depending on the region where you are from, where your account is logged in and where you are at the moment, like which domain you are using, I think you sometimes even have some other, um, payment methods like um, instant bank transfer and stuff. Um, right now, I feel like I want to pay with PayPal. Here it is suggested for me to pay in euros. If I Google quickly, £9.99, um, £9.99 um, pounds to euros, we're going to see this is €11.50. Euros so this is in 99% of the cases, this is the, the case. So here it's cheaper for me to click pounds and actually pay in pounds unless your, your credit card has um, some special conversion fee so far. My N26 credit card doesn't have this. It's the same no matter what currency you apply to the card. So for me, it's 79 cents cheaper to just pay in pounds and not in euros. Because obviously through the conversions, Ryanair tries to sneak a bit more money from you because yeah, it's worth it for them. So now I selected everything and I'm ready to pay. I can just click pay now and go to pay now. Then I'll be redirected to PayPal. So right now Ryanair is um, verifying my booking and you can see flights booked. Um, no thanks. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my phone. At least this is for the for the first time bookers with Ryanair. Yeah. Um, I have a Ryanair account. I use it all the time, so I don't need to do this right now. But normally, especially when you book international expensive flights, maybe from third parties that you normally never book with, take your phone out and just take a picture of the booking number. So you see the booking number there. Take a picture of the exact date, the time, and also just as simple as the website. Like what website did you book it with? This is really important because if you plan a long journey, I've had this many times before, unfortunately, that I booked lots of flights for a single journey and they were all sometimes with like third parties. And of course you get an email for every flight booking that you do, but emails can get deleted. They can land in spam. They can be get lost so easily. So always take a picture in the worst case that you have something um, to get back to. I normally don't do it for Ryanair because it's something that I use all the time. But for third parties, I always do it because I once had it that I had my booking number written down, but I didn't know what website I booked with. Like I didn't know what provider I booked this flight with. And it took like an hour for me to scan through all the websites to find the provider that I booked with. I don't want this to happen to you. So just take a picture of the booking confirmation here. You will also be able to check it in your emails. You'll get an email sent immediately. And yeah, this is how you book a Ryanair flight. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Luca. I'm the German travel guy and I really hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you follow the playlist, the how to find cheap flights playlist um, to not miss any further videos because we're just getting started. We're on video eight right now and we're going to have so many more videos in the future. So you will never have to pay too much again for a flight. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.